Hello fellow Amiga users, I'm Bill and I'm Anthony and we are the Guru Meditation. We're here at Vintage Computer Festival East 2018 at the InfoAge Science Center in Wall Township, New Jersey. Right, so come along with us. We're going to show you our great exhibit of Amiga Genlocks. We're also going to take you around the show to see what some of our friends have here. Let's get going. All right, guys, welcome to our Commodore Amiga Genlock exhibit at Vintage Computer Festival East 2018. You may have seen our Genlock episode on the Guru Meditation YouTube channel, and this is an extension of it, man. Everyone like, really liked that video a lot, so we said, you know what, let's just let's bring the Genlock out into the wild and show the people. So that's what we got set up here. I'm not going to go into too much detail because we already did that in our video, but I'll give you a general overview of our setup. So we've got an Amiga 1200 here running D Paint 5. We got the output, the Amiga RGB out of the Amiga 1200 going into the Super Gen SX. Then we have this gorgeous Canon XL1 camera that I absolutely love, man. I've shot a lot with this camera back in the day. It's just an awesome, awesome camera. We got the output of the XL1 also going into the Super Gen SX. Now what the Super Gen does is it takes two video signals and synchronizes them so you can fade between them. So you have to think of it as almost like Photoshop layers, right? So you have Amiga RGB on the top, man, layer one, and then on the bottom in layer two, you got the video output from the Canon XL1. So then what you can do is you can actually choose the transparency of each video layer. So when you're making titles in Deluxe Paint, you, make, uh, you can put titles over black, right? And black is color zero, and then you can remove the color zero by sliding the background slider, and you can see that right here. So I have this um, animated Kara font that says Welcome to VCF East. It's on a black background. So this is the output of the Genlock here. This is our Amiga RGB. You can see it is on a black background. And over here, I can adjust our background slider. There's full Amiga RGB, faded out. And there we have Amiga RGB superimposed on top of the output from the Canon XL1. It's live video. You can see that. Then we have this little beauty here. It's a 3D printed Raspberry Pi case with the Raspberry Pi 3 in it. And it's just playing a video loop. We got some uh, advanced techniques with Deluxe Paint 3 video playing. And I'm going to be showing people how to use uh, D-Paint on the Amiga 1200. You can see here I'm running D-Paint. And I'm going to show them how to make these cool animated titles throughout the day. Quiet on the set! Oh, okay. <laughs> it's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. So what we have here is a Macro Systems Draco Casablanca nonlinear video editing system. This is actually an Amiga-based system, but not made by Commodore. And it's a nonlinear video editor, it means you get the video into a hard drive in here, and then you can cut it, do fades, dissolves, everything you want on the digital image, in, so you don't have any degradation, and then you record it out of the system when you're done. I feel like this is the Crazy Eddie section of our exhibit because I feel like the prices are so low we're practically giving it all away. But this is a bunch of Genlocks, and you might again know this from the Genlock episode that we did, that were available for the Amiga from the early days, the Amigen, a very simple system, up to the more professional Super Gen, the prosumer system, and of course the Greek Mafia system. You can't have a Genlock exhibit without having the first Amiga with the first Amiga Genlock. Of course, you can't see it on this system because Commodore tucked it in the back, but this Amiga 1000 has the Commodore Genlock hooked up to it, and that right now is hooked up as a video source to a surprising Genlock from Commodore in the CDTV. Because if you ever noticed, there's actually a Genlock button on the controller. So right now, the video from the Amiga 1000 is in the backdrop on the CDTV through the CDTV's Genla. All right, Anthony, last but not least, what do we got here? So our last system 
is one of the last of the Amiga Gen locks, the GVPG lock. This is kind of a professional unit, but if you notice it has no sliders on it. It actually gets its control through the joystick port and the software that Great Valley Products produce for it that runs on the Amiga that it's plugged into. Okay, so the G-Lock has got software control. Yeah, software control through the joystick port and you have your, you basically have your sliders here on the screen and all your other controls for the GVP G-Lock. You actually, anything you hit here is going to get sent to the G-Lock for it to composite your video, your, your computer screens and all that and do your switching back and forth. Now if you want to not have to have the software up on the screen you could actually also plug this into another Amiga running the software to control the Genlock for you. Alright Anthony's got the Genlock fever and he's just been going crazy behind our table. He's got something cool hooked up here for us. Well Bill, you have such a great thing going on down there. I said look I really gotta upstage him. I got Das Bunker, I'm gonna do more. So what I got here is three Amigas with three Gen Locks. So you got one, I got three. I got my 1200 here with one of the last Gen Locks to come out for the Amigas, the GVP G Lock. I got the video out from that coming over to the 1000. So we got AGA back to OCS into the Gen Lock on the 1000 where the 1000 is displaying the demo text that came on the disc with the 1300 Gen Lock that's in it. It's overlaying that on the 1200's video. It's sending that from its video out on its Gen Lock to the video in on the CDTV's Gen Lock where we are celebrating the Guru Meditation at BCF East 2018. All right, we never did this before, but here we are inside InfoAge Science Center. Let's just get a quick overview of the whole VCF East. Right, let's take on a quick tour. Come on along. Heading down the hall. Here you have the vendor's room where you can make it rain cash. Oh yeah, lots of good stuff to buy in here. Oh, what do we have? But We have the goods coming up. First exhibit room. This is the room that we're in, of course, so it's the best room. And here's where you're going to see all kinds of stuff that you probably, you may have seen, you may have worked on in the past, you may never have seen. Oh, that's cool. There's some silicon graphics machines. Yeah. That is we got gorgeous. some Apple leases next to them. This is like one of the ultimate Apple Lisa and collections. And you probably won't see Apple leases much because <laughs> we all know that didn't sell very well. Did not, did not sell very well. Here, emulation of old systems. The Moby Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Here we got some music. Playing the tunes, love it. An old MIDI studio. There he goes, hitting them keys, listening to them tunes. Oh no, we all know the guru comes correct. There's our Genlock exhibit. And here's our great friends from across the pond, but on this side of the pond with their awesome European computer collection. The Alice, the sexy Alice is coming up. And especially Alice. You like blinking lights? This <laughs> guy's got them. <laughs> never believe that a computer that predates the Commodore 64 and its SID chip could make music, but it can. We got, of course, Jeff with the computer eyes. Digitizing uh, in the 8-bit world. Got old BBSing going on. We have the schizophrenic computer collection right here. Yeah. Computers no, that think they're see. one thing or another. They don't know what they are. It's an Apple, it's an IBM, it's a 2E, it's a CPM machine, it's MS-DOS, it's a pet. We don't know. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they're from, but there they are. 
And of course, gotta have gotta have Atari. Gotta have some Atari present. This is the souped up Atari 800. Of course, you can't come here with just a regular machine. It's gotta have a little twist, a little turn, make it interesting. And uh, here we got some music from a machine predates the Apple too, even. Yeah, this but guy, I'm not running music right now. Not running no, music I'm right now, but right if you were here, you, you, could hear, music. you could hear three voice music out of a machine predates the Apple II. If you were here, but you're not. But of course we know BCF, it's not just one room, it's two rooms. Let's go. Two rooms! <laughs> we're heading down into the bowels. We're heading deep in the heart. Hi. Camp Evans, deep into the heart of this former military base. I almost feel like I should have an M16 in my hand. Polished buttons. I'm about to get yelled at by my CO. I'm not dressed right. What you did with computers before they had screens, before they had keyboards. The print shop. This you were a kid back in the day, this was huge. You got your computer Atari Commodore, your monitor, your printer, you made banners, greeting cards, like your own Hallmark store right there in your house. Newsroom, this is one that I had. I had Newsroom. I had Newsroom on my Apple IIe. Oh, this is beautiful. And this computing before computers. Abacus's slide rules. Oh wow. Slide rules, like real old school. Old school. Good heavens, don't even know what that is. And I probably wouldn't understand it if I did. <laughs> it's also a slide rule. Wow. That's a slide rule, that's amazing. That, like this is the age of, so how, about how old is that? Um, this is from 1910. 1910, that's from 1910 right there. Wow. Vintage, Commodore, to modern, eh, yes, it's a Commodore, I suppose. It's kind of a Commodore. <laughs> a little That's, 64 Mini. I'm going to call it Mini Me, simulating the ENIAC, one of the earliest of computers right there. Oh, wow, that is cool. I haven't, checked that. I haven't seen that one yet. And now, I mean, look at that. Look at all them lights going, blinking, blinky, blinking. How far we've come, huh? Imagine that. that. Look at the resolution on that screen. You know it's a good computer when it's got blinking lights. Oh yeah, you gotta have the blinking lights. That's right. What 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 became your smartphone? Imagine carrying this around instead of your iPhone or Android. A whole collection of portables from the beginning almost till now, because till now you have it in your pocket. You don't need to show you. You already got it. Anyone who listens to Antic Podcast knows all about APX. Even I'm not an Atari guy, I listen to Antic. If you don't listen to Antic, you should. They had interviews with people who made all these different software that was in APX. This was where people could just send in their program to Atari. Atari would publish it and sell it if they, if they found it good enough. Atari Program Exchange. And here, you could, you could see it right here, magazines. Really nice. A little demo scene action. Oh, here we go. If you think that the demo scene on the Amiga, there's something predates it, the demo scene on the Commodore 64. We'll have to talk more with them later. They're here with uh, Demo Splash. It's a demo party here in the States. It's like half an operating system, OS slash 2. This was the operating system that IBM brought out with the PS2 model line. We don't see it much here, but what ran the early ATMs was that operating system. Now that's a hard drive, folks. That's a hard drive. This is all about the storage in your machine from the earliest days to now. And the earlier days. And that and that's yep, you can actually see the inside of the drives as they run. That's basically similar technology. It's in your computer right now. Big enough to touch. We have another friend of ours showing preview of his new movie that we're all gonna wanna see when it comes out. Atari STs. We all, we all know the big rivalry, Amiga Atari. We're the guru meditation, so of course, 
we got to make fun of this, right? We do. We got to. We got an obligation. We love these guys, but we have an obligation. This is because the Atari ST was so bad, you had to run a different operating system on it. So you got, much like on the Amiga, you had the bridge boards, you had the, the cards for the Amiga 500 that let you run IBM software, let you run Mac. You have STs running the older Atari 8-bit software, you got STs running PC software, and you got STs running Mac software. So here's laptops that you would not possibly want on your lap. They're more yeah. properly portable rather yeah. than laptops. Absolutely, because you did need to plug them in. No batteries in these. Although, this one's actually kind of small. I think you could carry that around pretty easily. That would be great to bring to Starbucks. And you know we had computerized upstairs, which was the Commodore 64 digitizing. This is an even earlier computer hooked up to a camera digitizing. That is incredible. And that's some drill worthy stuff right there. That's beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. Here's a homebrew computer right here. You could build yourself. It's the cactus, our friend Alex's project. Homemade computer. It's freaking awesome. R2D2's grandfather, the RBSX robot. RB5X, it looked like an S to me. <laughs> it shows how bad my eyesight's getting. <laughs> right, so here we have the entire line of Apple IIs, starting from the first Apple IIs, released 1977, I think, the same year the PET came out, the same year the TRS-80, all the way through all the different changes, Apple II, Apple II Plus, and then probably, my guess, on the other side, we'll see the Apple IIe. And as I suspected, you got your Apple IIe right there. Look at this. Oh, that's a beauty. See what's inside without having the cover open. Look at that. And, and much like people today, gamers today, with the lights inside, lighting it up, there you go. There's a pimped Apple IIe. That's gorgeous. Wow. Wouldn't you love to have that in your room back in the day? Oh, yeah. I would have. Would you get, Anthony? Golden Gate board for the Amiga. Bridges, the Zorro to ISA lets you use, unlike a bridge board, this lets you use the ISA cards on the Amiga. So if you have an ISA Ethernet that's compatible with the drivers they have, you can use that on the Amiga side give uh, Ethernet to your Amiga 2000, That's or 3000, or 4000. All right, Anthony, another year at BCF, I had a blast, and it was super cool to see some of our friends' exhibits this year, too. Absolutely. You know, what always excites me about this show is that we always see something new, and we always learn something. Yeah, I can't wait for next year. Absolutely, and we will see you on the next episode of The Guru Meditation. Come with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Quiet on the set. <laughs> I'm so fired up. <laughs> this is gonna be so psychic. That doesn't make any sense, and I don't care because you're probably gonna cut it out anyway. All right, Anthony. Another year of BCF. That was awesome, man. I had a blast. Oh yeah. All right. Oh. <sighs> Pay me the same. How many takes we do? <laughs> Oh, I gotta do the, the Kylo Ren. <laughs>